Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out the range with a Krebs Custom short barrel shotgun based on the Vepper 12. Last year, Indiana finally got short barrel shotguns legalized. This whole time, we've been able to own machine guns, short barrel rifles, all the good stuff, any other weapons, destructive devices, but we couldn't own short barrel shotguns, or for the sake of this video, SBSs. So when we finally got the law approved and we regained our rights and are now able to own SBSs, we decided to get some short barrel shotguns into Copper Custom. And we decided to use a shotgun that I'm quite fond of, which is the Vepper 12. The Vepper, in my opinion, is head and shoulders above the Segas. Uh, very similar in terms of features and functions. However, the quality of the Vepper is just much higher. So we used some base model Vepers. These are some of the earlier ones. These have the full folding stock capability. What Krebs did to the gun was, of course, refinished it with Krebs coat, but he gave it a full action job. So it has a Krebs type trigger in it and action's very smooth. He shortened the barrel, rethreaded the barrel, and it uses a standard Sega thread on the end of the barrel. So you can use external chokes or you can put on muzzle devices like what we have here with the Silencer Co. Salvo 12. He also tuned the gas system so that it'll work with lighter loads. Now, if you want to run really lightweight field loads, you'll want to put an external full choke on the gun and that'll give it enough pressure to fully cycle with those lightweight game loads. But medium loads and really hot loads, of course, will work just fine in the gun without a full choke. So we're gonna play with it this afternoon with the Salvo 12 in place. I do have the Salvo 12 set up, so it's in its eight inch configuration. Last time you guys saw this, it was on my KSG as a six inch suppressor. Now that's not very quiet. It's certainly not hearing safe. So I lengthened it to eight inches. You can run it in two inch increments from six all the way out to 12 inches in length. I put the eight inch kit on it and it should be at least hearing safe with standard field loads this afternoon. With the six inch, it was really quiet with the Aguila Minis, which sadly won't run in a semi-automatic shotgun like the Vepra 12. So let's do a little bit of shooting with the shotgun, show you guys what it's all about, and just kind of brag about the fact that we finally have short barreled shotguns. Loving that. God, that's quiet. Let's take the Salvo 12 off. Well, let's call it a Salvo 8 because it's not 12 inches in length currently. The Salvo has a wrench that it comes with and you can use this to tighten or loosen the muzzle device. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this to break that jam nut loose, I can unscrew it. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can take the salvo off this way and shoot it as is, or you can use the wrench to pop the entire muzzle device off. And this will set it up to be as short as you can possibly get the shotgun. Now Krebs obviously rethreads the barrel and makes sure that the threads are concentric to bore. You can use any type of muzzle device that's standard for say a Sega 12, so you can use external chokes or standoff devices, things like that. So now the barrel is 13 inches in length, and when we fold the stock, we have one very short little package. Let's just call it a 12 gauge crank off. It's pretty cool. Let's try some slugs. These are some Remington slugs. And we'll stick them in the uh, I was going to use the SGM. Let's go ahead and just use the five rounder because we got five rounds in the box. Don't have all that many out here this afternoon. You can see that big old slug sitting in there. The magazines, you got to load them a certain way. Just barely push them down and push it back until the rim stops because it's a rimmed cartridge. It's, uh, they have to be very careful how they stack in the magazine. You can't get this rim behind this rim, otherwise it'll cause a malfunction. So, all right, Let's see how these slugs do, recoil-wise too. This is a test of how close the sights are to being on. Get that little pepper popper down range. <laughs> I saw the rear end of the popper come up. <laughs> All right, there's a big ringer down range, probably about 50 yards, maybe 70 yards. Couldn't move that one. Wow, man, that dumps some serious energy. Recoil's not that bad, and the trigger's pretty much awesome. This would make a heck of a deer gun. Short, handy little package, little powerhouse. 
The Vepper 12 has a 1913 rail across the top, which allows you to mount red dot sights like this Hilux B dot red dot that I have on here right now. Now you can get away with doing this because the way the top cover mounts to the Vepper 12 allows for a fairly rigid mounting platform for optics. In the front, you have a hinge, much like a Krinkoff or an AKS-74U, so that holds it very firmly in the front. And then in the rear, this button holds everything pretty snugly in place. Now you might, if you really wrench on it, get a little bit of movement. You're not gonna win a long range competition with this gun, but for CQB type applications, a red dot on this gun is gonna work really, really well. One thing you'll also wanna keep in mind is that what I found out with my previous testing using the Vepper 12s is that you don't want your sight mounted over the ejection port. Putting that weight right here on the top cover will induce malfunctions in the gun. So you're gonna to wanna to set your red dot sight further to the rear like I have it set up on here right now. Also, you'll notice in the video, I've had this cheek riser rotated off to the right hand side like that. This cheek riser allows you to set it in a couple of different positions. And when you have a red dot sight mounted, it gives you the proper height for your cheek weld. When you're using iron sights, you can just flip it out of the way because you really don't need it. So you can get your face down close to the stock to line up the sights. This is five rounds. Let me talk about the safety here really quick. The safety is right here. You'll notice it has this little arm that comes down. This little arm allows you to use your knuckle to bump the safety off and go for the trigger. You also have ambi controls, so with your right thumb, you can also manipulate the safety. Okay, so I have five rounds of slugs loaded in this thing. Let's see how it does with the red dot sight. Yep, works pretty darn well. It's a nice handy little setup. You guys might not be able to see this, hopefully we'll be able to hear it, but there's a man-sized target that's painted red down at 100 yards. I'm gonna see if I can hit him with a slug. I heard that one hit. I heard that one hit. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, the sights are fairly close to being on. We didn't zero the gun, but it seems to be pretty darn close if we're hitting a steel target at 100 yards with it. That's pretty awesome. Let's take a look inside the Krebs Custom Vepper 12 gauge. First, you're gonna wanna make sure the gun's empty. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the bolt to the rear, drop the magazine out by hitting the flapper release here, drops right out. Look inside, make sure the chamber's clear, which it is. Now I'm gonna let the bolt go home. Now right back here on the top of the takedown button, is a little plunger. You have to push this little plunger down and push forward on the takedown button. Once you do that, the top cover will hinge open like a crank. Now you can pull your recoil spring out and pull your bolt and carrier to the rear. Take the bolt out, just like an AK, you just push back and rotate and it comes out. You can also take your gas tube off. It's on fairly tight, so I'm gonna use the bolt carrier as a takedown tool. Rotate that up and your gas tube comes off. To put it back together, you just reverse the process. All right, take the bolt and carrier, put the bolt back in. Oops, gotta line the little bolt pieces up. All right the recoil spring back in. Gotta make sure that little cover is off to the side here. Now you can just pop the top cover down. It's back together. Pretty simple. We're going for the one further down now. All right. No. I'm back to the 50. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it shoots really well. I don't know, I like it. These are seven and a half shot estate field loads, lightweight loads. We've removed the suppressor. Now again, the shotgun is intended to 
fire field loads, but if you're going to shoot loads as light as this, typically you'd want to put a full choke on the end to give you enough back pressure to properly cycle the action. We're just going to see what happens though without a choke. There's no muzzle device on the gun whatsoever. So in essence, it's just an open bore. Yeah, it did short stroke. So we don't have a full choke out here to put on it, but I just wanted to see if it was going to be able to make it. Now keep in mind guys, we've got a really short barrel here. Krebs did open the port up, so we're going to step it up one. We're going to put some different shells in it, but I just wanted to see again if it would function without a full choke on it. Not quite got enough oomph to drive it out. Almost. It's trying, but uh, no cigar. All right. Let's try something a little bit warmer. This should definitely cycle it. This is Remington Double Ot Buck High Brass. And this stuff is hot. <laughs> it flattens that little pepper popper. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. I got to load another magazine up. I'm going to try my luck with an SGM 10 rounder using some of the Remington Buckshot. Remington ammo is questionable at best in my experience. If I run it with uh, Remington, it'll pretty much run with anything. The SGM magazines, though, sometimes are a little bit problematic. Huh, that one worked flawlessly. We switched out magazines trying a different one, and this one works pretty darn good. So, there you go. The two most common questions I get are, one, does it accept Glock magazines? No, of course not, guys. This is a 12-gauge shotgun. Glock has never made a 12-gauge. And secondly, the most common question is, how does it hip-fire 80s style? Well, we're going to find out right now. It Arnold's just fine. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out and taking a look at the Krebs Custom Vepper 12 gauge shotgun. When we finally got the law passed here in Indiana making these legal, I wanted to pick just one shotgun that I would turn into an SBS. I'm not a real big shotgunner, so my first choice was the Vepper 12. Now when I had this shotgun made for myself, we also had a few extras made uh, for Copper Custom, so if you guys want one, you can swing by and pick one up. They are 1850. The shotgun is only 33 inches in length without the suppressor in place, and it's even shorter when you fold the stock making for a very short handy little 12 gauge with the stock extended and an 8 inch salvo 12 installed it's only 42 inches in length which means it's only a couple inches longer than a standard vepper 12 that hasn't been turned into an sbs if you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video you can ask those questions down below i usually stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer any questions you guys may have and please swing by and check out Copper Custom. It's our online store. Shopping there really does help out here at the Military Arms Channel. And if you haven't already, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all of YouTube's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon. Ah, that really is fun. Somebody should outlaw those things. Just kidding.